the environment we're surrounded in. It's stunning. I mean, it's just world-class beauty. We can't work in a more pristine and scenic environment. It's really close to a lot of national parks, state parks, and beautiful parts of the country. There's dinosaur tracks that I've taken my, my four-year-old to. You know, we've got slot canyons for hiking. Every picture you see of this pristine southwest, like the Red Wall Canyons and the Granite Mountains, I mean, everything you might imagine when you think of, you know, your pristine southwest environment is, you know, could be a picture taken from our backyard. Getting residents throughout here to, to see this environment and to see what it's like is the only way you can really know if it's for you. And, and like I said, for me, when I first came through a site like this, I thought, yeah, it's, it's really fun. It's it's a nice place to be, but, but I don't know if I could end up working here. And then as I just kept getting more and more experience in an environment like this, I thought now, now I'm having a hard time thinking how I could work anywhere else. Tuba City Regional Healthcare Center is an 80 bed hospital with ancillary services, including clinics and family medicine, pediatrics, internal medicine, dentistry, and physical therapy, to name a few. We have had learners in almost every department over the last 25 years. My job as academic dean is to help the department chairs recruit residents and students and ensure the residents and students have excellent clinical experiences. So when I came out to do my residency, um, I knew it was going to be a rural place, but still driving up here and seeing it was a little bit of a shock. I'm originally from LA area, so I'm a city girl and was nervous about being out here where there's not a Starbucks on every corner and Target is an hour and a half away. But it really surprised me in a lot of ways because even though it's a rural community, it's not lonely out here. There's a really strong community feeling. And there's no traffic. That's my favorite thing. One of my favorite parts of my residency was meeting fellow residents and sharing experiences and exploring the beauty and culture of the Southwest together. And there's a lot of ways to be actively involved in the community. I coach soccer every year and it's great to be out there and meeting people and seeing your patients and just establishing a real connection. So I think that if you're hesitant about coming because it's in a rural area, it's important to remember that Tuba City is a great community. As the Chief of Pediatrics, I do organize the medical resident, pediatric resident rotations and we accept uh, pediatrics residents from a multitude of programs, um, second and third year peds residents. We will host students and nurse practitioners from time to time as well. I was a resident and a student myself on Navajo Nation. Uh, I had rotated to Shiprock in family medicine and uh, pediatrics once in medical school and again in residency. And so it's where I fell in love with the, with the Southwest. It's where I knew I wanted to come and continue my career. And so when there was an opening at Tuba City in pediatrics department all those years ago, I jumped at it. The awesome thing that I get to do now is, is pay that forward. I'm part of this global health track at my medical school. And so students go all over the world on rotations. And a few of my friends rotated here in Tuba City in the emergency department. And they came back and had so many great stories about the faculty they worked with, the doctors, the nurses, and the patient population. And not only that, they got to take a lot of great trips on the weekends. They had a great experience. And so I decided to, to reach out to the OBGYN department here um, and uh, do my global health elective. I think at Tuba City, you have the really unique opportunity to work closely with the doctors and the rest of the team that you normally wouldn't be able to do at a big university academic setting. You have more time here to spend with the patient, to go through education with them, to explain the process, to listen to their stories. I think it's the perfect blend of you know Western and traditional medicine. Everyone is invested in the same goal, and that's to take the best care of the patient. I chose to come here um, for several reasons. One, that I knew I'd already met the, um, the surgeons with whom I would work, and I knew I would get excellent mentorship. I, um, I had met the patients that I would be able to see and knew that you know, there would be joy in taking care of them. And um, also the area in northern Arizona, the Four Corners area, is um, very beautiful.
Many of the people here in my home community in which I work know that I have their best interest at heart. Yate, she Sofina Calderon Yinishia, ki ani nishle do look at an empashishin, ashi hintashiche do traba hintashinale. Hi, I'm Dr. Sofina Calderon. I am of the Towering House clan born for the Reed people. My maternal grandfather was of the Salt clan, and my paternal grandfather was of the Edgewater clan. This is the traditional greeting that we use here on the Navajo Nation to introduce ourselves. When I came back as a student, it was wonderful to come back and see all of my people and for them to look at me as a medical student and later on as a resident. And they were very surprised to see a studying physician or upcoming physician that looked just like them. And now coming back home, my sons enjoy going out to see their grandparents and spend time with the sheep and ride the horses and just learn and see a lot of the things that I experienced when I was growing up here. Hi, I'm Dr. Calderon. How can I help you? One of my favorite parts about working at Tuba City Regional is the size, as we've talked about, in terms of the community being small enough and the facility being small enough that we know everybody. But it is big enough that there's quite a few resources. Uh, I've worked at several uh, tribal and remote and rural hospitals, but rarely do we have, you know, in addition to the primary care team and the, and the medicine team, is a, a psychiatrist, a otolaryngologists, uh, dermatologists, all on staff so we can bounce ideas back and forth and get their input in real time and not have to send our patients a couple hours away to the outlying cities. Just listen to your, to your breathing here. Yeah, so this is certainly a bilingual community. Obviously, a lot of what we would imagine about the Navajo elders speaking their, their, their traditional language is true. But what's so nice to see is that we have younger people speaking it too. You know, we've got people in their 20s and 30s speaking the language just casually in the hallway, but also serving as interpreters for the older generation that isn't as comfortable in English. And so, you know, it's a, it's a bilingual practice environment. It's fun to learn, you know. When COVID hit Navajo Nation in March, I was asked to be the interim chief medical officer. And uh, it was a role that I felt utterly unprepared for, but I got to participate in a lot of really important projects and the medical staff and nursing staff and facilities staff all came together to really, really respond in our time of crisis. Uh, we were able to make changes really, really quickly for the safety of patients and our staff. Everything from procuring and creating our own PPE, we used our dentists and our dental assistants to sew gowns at the local church. Uh, we had an orthopedic surgeon that was responsible for distributing the gowns and procuring the uh, fabric to make the gowns. We had to set up a triage tent and decide what kind of tests we would use and who to use them on, who would get a test and who wouldn't, especially in the first three months of the pandemic when there was no testing available. Implementation of our telehealth programs was really challenging. Uh, here on Navajo Nation, about a third of our patients don't have running water and about 10% don't have electricity. And so reliable internet is actually really hard to come by, which makes telemedicine visits very, very challenging. And so we used our, our phone numbers and our phone assets to try and communicate with our long-term patients, um, continuing their continuity of care and being able to deliver the care that we'd always tried to deliver. Rotating here a year into the COVID pandemic has been really eye-opening. Um, you know, the Navajo Nation was hit very, very hard by COVID, and I haven't met a single patient who hasn't had a loved one pass away from this awful virus. Um, but coming at a point where the vaccine has been around for, you know, three or four months at this point has been really eye-opening. The, the community has been through so much together that they um, are really prioritizing this vaccination effort, coming together and organizing 
using these vaccine blitzes, these clinics, um, and now our COVID rates are, are very low. And it's nice to see this community starting to recover um, and process what it's been through for the past year. So I've been really impressed with the vaccine rollout. And I think this model can be applied to a lot of different parts of the country and the world. Or even as early as October, well before the EUA for Pfizer or Moderna were established, Navajo Nation told us to be ready to give vaccines. And so we started planning in October and November. And I was very, very glad that we had gotten the team together to get those vaccine clinics ready. Uh, our priority, of course, was vaccinating all of our employees. And I think we have over a 93% employee vaccination rate. Certainly in the medical staff, we're above 93% for all of our medical staff being vaccinated. Dr. Glazer, are you in here? Hey. I think it's so good as, as trainees to come to a place like Tuba City to remind us why we went into medicine in the first place. And that's to work with the people that need it the most. And you really see that here in the Navajo Nation. You're working with the most vulnerable. Um, and I think it's a good reminder as to, to why we went into this career. We hope everyone who has had a rotation in Tuba becomes an advocate and an ambassador for Native American people. I'm proud of the work we do at Tuba City Regional Healthcare Center, and I'm honored to work with diverse and interesting colleagues. I'm particularly proud of our response to the pandemic. I hope you will consider a rotation in Tuba City, and I promise it will be a wonderful and eye-opening experience. The best part about being a resident in Tuba City is the quality of patient care that you get to provide. The best thing about being a resident at Tuba City was autonomy and excellent attendings. The best thing about being a resident and rotating to Navajo Nation was that I could prepare myself for my future life. The best part of being a resident at Tuba City Regional was just the breadth of opportunity. Absolutely unbeatable. The best thing about being a resident at Tuba City Regional is the incredible patient population. The best part of being a resident here in Tuba City is knowing that more people are following me here back to the reservation.